Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast. Today, I have a very interesting guest, Dr. Nathan Bryan, and we're going to talk about nitric oxide, its functions in the body, what happens as we age, and how you can utilize um, foods or supplements to get enough nitric oxide in your body. So with that said, uh, Dr. Bryan, welcome to the Anti-Aging Hacks show. Thank you very much. Great pleasure to be here. Yeah. I'd love to start off by diving into your background and how you discovered or got into nitric oxide as it's such an important molecule for us, not only when we're young, but also as we get older. Yeah. Well, I've been interested in science and medicine probably since uh, grade school. And then after high school, I went to the University of Texas at Austin and got a degree in biochemistry. And then from there, went to LSU School of Medicine where I got a PhD in molecular and cellular physiology. And it was during that time at LSU that I had uh, the introduction into nitric oxide. A Nobel Prize had just been awarded for its discovery, and one of the guys who won the Nobel Prize came and gave a lecture and, you know, got to learn a lot. Before that, I had never heard of nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. Even in inorganic chemistry, it was never came up. Yeah. Um, but we knew that it was an extremely important molecule, but there were still a lot of unanswered questions like, how does the body make nitric oxide? What goes wrong in people that can't make it? And then, how do you fix it? Mm -hmm. So for me, that was uh, job security because it, we we developed techniques where we could measure and detect nitric oxide, quantify it in different disease models, and then once we had that information, then we could then start developing rationally designed drugs to fix a lot of different chronic diseases like heart disease and Alzheimer's and diabetes and chronic um, wounds and ulcers. Mm -hmm. So that's that was kind of the evolution of how I got introduced into it, and then. You know, I worked under Fred Murad, one of the other guys who shared the Nobel Prize, and he was my department chair for a number of years. That's cool. And we had um, a drug discovery program of how do we make safe and effective nitric oxide drugs. Mm -hmm. And it was during that time I was screening a lot of natural product uh, libraries, uh, finding natural products that would help generate nitric oxide, and filed a number of patents. We now have uh, several dozen issued patents on that technology, and now my objective is to integrate nitric oxide based product technology into every major market segment around the globe from skin care to supplements to FDA approved drugs. Fantastic. Well, that's, there's a lot of questions I have <laughs> following what you just said and the brief conversation we had earlier today. And so let's get started with how is nitric oxide created or produced in our bodies? There's two ways that it's recognized. So the first pathway to be discovered was through an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase. This enzyme is found naturally in neurons, in our nerve cells, in our endothelial cells, in our epithelial cells, in our uh, sinuses, in our airways, and even by our immune cells. And so that enzyme converts arginine to nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. And the older we get, that enzyme becomes dysfunctional, so we make less nitric oxide from arginine mm -hmm. the older we get. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, there's a backup compensatory system and we can use diet then as a means to compensate for the loss of endothelial nitric oxide production. Mm -hmm. And that comes primarily from inorganic nitrate found in green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. So when we eat like spinach or kale or arugula, 90 minutes after we consume that vegetable, nitrate is secreted in our saliva, the bacteria then respire on that nitrate and reduce it all the way down to nitrite and nitric oxide. And then now for the next three to four hours, every time we swallow our saliva, we get a burst of nitric oxide gas in the lumen of the stomach, provided the stomach is making stomach acid. Right. But the problem is people are using fluoride toothpaste, it's an antiseptic, kills the bacteria, using mouthwash to kill the bacteria, or they're using antacids, and those things completely shut down nitric oxide production. And if you don't have nitric oxide being produced by the enzyme, and you don't have nitric oxide being produced through the salivary circuit, then you get sick, cells become dysfunctional, and eventually it leads to end organ failure and death. Mm -hmm. Interesting, so the nitric oxide synthase, as you mentioned, is the enzyme that's found in epithelial cells, endothelial cells, which are the, which are the lining of all your blood, blood vessels, vessels right. in, in your body, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, and so it's in nerve cells, of course, as, as well. And so what's, in, what's the importance of having nitric oxide in your endothelial or your blood, blood uh, yeah. lining cells? Well, it's, nitric oxide is what regulates blood flow to all cells in the body. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if we need to recall memory, then we have to increase blood flow to the prefrontal cortex to recall memory. If we want to start exercising, then we have to increase perfusion of the coronary arteries to meet the increased metabolic demands on the heart. Mm -hmm. 
if we want to increase blood flow to the pelvic regions before sex, then we have to dilate those blood vessels. Mm -hmm. And so the point is, if you can't make nitric oxide, then you can't increase blood flow at a time of need. Yeah. So then what happens is you have vascular dementia, you get ischemic heart disease, you get sexual dysfunction, and things begin to fail. Mm -hmm. The other problem with that is you need nitric oxide to deliver oxygen. Mm -hmm. If you can't make nitric oxide, then you become hypoxic. That became obvious during COVID over the past two years, and that's what's killing people, the lack of the ability to bind and deliver oxygen throughout the, throughout the body. Mm -hmm. And that's being measured by oxygen saturation. That's right. With your pulse oximeters. And I've been around people that have had low oxygen and you can see it and it's pretty scary when oxygen starts to fall in the 80s and even 70s yeah, that's right. uh, for SpO2. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, so it's important. Now, the other thing you said is not, if we don't have enough nitrite, nitric a uh, acid, sorry, nitric oxide synthase, right. then we can take supplements or diet or green leafy vegetables which increase the nitric oxide in the stomach, right. provided we have enough stomach acid. Now, does that nitric oxide get delivered to the endothelial cells for them to expand? Well, it's the same. We, we published on this. It was the first demonstration or publication that nitric oxide acted as a hormone. We published on this, I think, in 2006 or 2007. Mm -hmm. So the point is, if you can make nitric oxide in a single biological compartment, yeah. like nitric oxide produced in the heart would protect the liver, mm -hmm. nitric oxide produced in the stomach would protect the heart, nitric oxide produced in the oral cavity would protect the brain. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're delivering nitric oxide gas, it acts as a hormone and it goes to other organs and tissues um, and basically does its job, can regulate blood flow. But that's just half of the story. So then the other half is how do you fix the enzyme in the endothelial cells? Because yeah. you still have to restore the function of that enzyme. Mm -hmm. And so we understand that now it's due to the oxidation of tetrahydrobiopterin. And so we put, and it's complex science, but we put a redox coupler in the technology to prevent the oxidation of VH4. So we restore the endothelial function, restore the function of the nitric oxide synthase enzyme. Mm -hmm. So the endothelial cells can actually do their job, generate nitric oxide, prevent the inflammation, immune dysfunction, and oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. Interesting, so I'll come back to this in a second, but uh, we've all heard that erectile dysfunction is caused by lack of blood flow. And I think men that are undergoing it can testify to that. It's highly frustrating and they resort to taking the blue pill yeah, right. or, or other things to help the process move along. And I've also heard you say that heart disease or cardiac function is limited by reduced nitric oxide. Like how, what is the relation between nitric oxide and heart function? So when you look at two, two, really two aspects of heart function, you look at the pump function and you look at the kind of the plumbing mm -hmm. of it. So in, in heart disease, what happens is the coronary arteries become clogged and you get a plaque develop and then the plaque becomes unstable and it ruptures. Mm -hmm. So it's specifically in the heart, the only way to increase oxygen delivery to the heart is to dilate the coronary arteries. Mm -hmm. The only way to do that is through the production of nitric oxide. So the science tells us that if you lose the ability to make nitric oxide in the endothelial cells, that functional loss precedes the structural changes by many years, sometimes decades. Mm -hmm. So when you lose the ability to make nitric oxide over the next several years you start to get inflammation, immune dysfunction, and oxidative stress. So what that means is there's plaque that starts developing in the lining of the blood vessel, mm -hmm. that plaque becomes unstable, and it ruptures. And if you have a rupture of a plaque in the coronary artery, that's an acute MI or a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people that's fatal. For the people that survive it, then they have compromised cardiac function, mm -hmm. and they'll eventually go into heart failure, and then they'll die of heart failure. Yeah. So it's very clear that if you prevent the loss of nitric oxide production, you can prevent the onset and progression of heart disease. Okay. But we've so, also yeah. seen evidence now of post-infarct patients mm -hmm. where they have compromised cardiac function. If we start to give them the nitric oxide, you can see an improvement in the cardiac function. Okay, interesting. So walk me through this. When you have, what you're saying is when you have reduced arteries or they're not dilated, they're constricted, right. then there's less blood flow, that can cause inflammation um, and when there's inflammation, there's higher ability for LDL to attack the artery, get behind the artery wall, and start to cause a plaque, which over time gets bigger and bigger, and that plaque can break off and then go block the blood flow of the heart, That's right. which will cause a heart attack. Now, is it not possible that even if the arteries are dilated, that inflammation could still happen? 
Yeah, you know, I think it, the numbers are 70% of the heart attacks occur in people with less than 20% occlusion in the coronaries. Mm. So what that means is you don't have to have complete stenosis of the coronary arteries. Yeah. So it, it's not the amount of obstruction, it's the quality of the plaque. So if you have dilated blood vessels or open coronary arteries, but you've got unstable plaque and a highly inflamed endothelium, mm -hmm. then that plaque is going to rupture and it's going to cause an acute MI. I see. So you have to be able to maintain the inflammation. Mm -hmm. And nitric oxide is what puts the brakes on the inflammatory response. Okay, got it. And nitric oxide is created in endothelium, so it's, it's right, right there. It's right there where, where it's needed, yeah. Where it's needed and we can, it can help out. Um, so what happens as we get older? How is this, you talk, touched on re reduction in the ability. Is there certain lifestyle factors or other just age that limits the nitri nit nitric ox Nitric oxide synthase. Yeah. yeah. Well, the rate limiting step is oxidation of BH4, tetrahydrobotrin. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that do that. A high glycemic index will yeah. glycate the enzyme. Um, smoking, mm -hmm. sedentary lifestyle. If you're diabetic, you shut down nitric oxide production. Uh, so all the known major risk factors for cardiovascular disease all lead to a depletion of nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these factors lead to depletion of nitric oxide, which reduces or constricts your blood vessels, which leads causes to inflammation. Downs, leads to inflammation, heart attacks, and other problems. What other major life f diseases are as associated with reduced nitric oxide? Uh, all major human chronic disease. So whether it's uh, uh, you know, certainly heart disease, sexual dysfunction, renal insufficiency, mm -hmm. vascular dementia, Alzheimer's, um, every single human chronic disease is characterized by reduced blood flow to that organ. Mm. And you have reduced blood flow because you have insufficient nitric oxide production to regulate blood flow to that organ. Yeah, interesting. And I have met people that claim or they tell me they have Raynaud's yeah. or they have, you know, cold. A lot of women tell me they have cold hands and feet all the time. And I'm not sure if it's a, is that a function of reduced blood flow? Having It is. So it's, it's kind of a, a par paramount of both hypothyroidism and it's, it's a microvascular disease, mm -hmm. so it's a small vessel disease. So Raynaud's, and we've seen that, we can actually open up the small vessels through our nitric oxide and start perfusing the digits and, you know, warm up the hands and the, and the fingers. Mm -hmm. But it's even, even more complicated than that because now we're, we're entering into this new phase where women are developing what's called ischemic non-obstructive coronary artery disease. So it's a small vessel disease, and we, we now have, through my drug company, have a drug that we're submitting for a an FDA approval to do a clinical trial in ischemic non-obstructive coronary disease. So regardless of the cause, whether it's hypothyroidism or exposure to heavy metals, the net result is you have insufficient perfusion to organs, whether it's the digits in, in, in uh, Raynaud's syndrome or it's the small blood vessels in uh, ischemic non-obstructive coronary disease. The key is you have to open up those blood vessels. Mm -hmm. The only way we know how to do that is through nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the acute effects but you still have to get to the root cause of the problem. If mm -hmm. you have hypothyroidism, we've got to fix the thyroid. Right. We can open up the blood vessels, but until you restore the function of other systems, mm -hmm. the body is really not going to perform optimally. Right, so you could eat all the greens that you want, the kale, the arugulas, but right. you still want to fix the underlying problem. In a lot of cases, it could be hypothyroidism. That's right. Okay. Got yeah, it. but there's a pandemic. I mean, it's an epidemic of hypothyroidism. and. We see it because people are deficient in iodine. You need iodine for proper thyroid function. You know, there's fluoride in our drinking water, in our bathing water, in our toothpaste, and it just kills your thyroid function. Mm -hmm. So we have to eliminate those things. We have to supplement with iodine, mm -hmm. get rid of the fluoride. Okay, supplement with iodine, get rid of the fluoride. Easy enough in practical terms or yeah. in theory, yeah. but like you have to put filters on your um, you know, bathing water. Yeah, it's hard work staying healthy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and cut, change your toothpaste to something else. Yeah, you have to get rid of the fluoride toothpaste. It doesn't have fluoride, which I've done uh, in the last few months, so I'm excited about that. Okay, so then you said there's two components, right? The BC4 is what you mentioned, is the second part of the oxidation? The BH4, yeah, the BH4. yeah. Okay, so you've got a couple of methods. You've got a supplement and a, and a serum that we tested a little bit earlier. So talk about how you fix it systemically, but also topically on the skin. Yeah, so years ago we figured out how to make nitric oxide gas. Mm -hmm. So it's a gas, and so we kind of solved the riddle of we made a solid dose of nitric oxide gas. Mm -hmm. 
So when the lozenge, you put it in your mouth, the matrix falls apart, and you start to generate nitric oxide gas. Mm -hmm. Now, understanding that technology, we thought, well, what else can we do with this? The next logical step was topical, mm -hmm. because just like the heart is an organ, if you don't get proper blood flow, it fails. Mm -hmm. The skin is an organ, if it doesn't get proper blood flow, it fails. Right. So when skin fails, you lose collagen, you lose hydration, fine lines and wrinkles appear, um, dermatitis, age spots. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, well, if we can replenish nitric oxide topically, mm -hmm. can we overcome the effects of aging? Mm. And the answer is yes. We've got four published clinical trials. So when we apply the, the nitric oxide topically, and again, that's through an innovative technology that we have two chambers. When you mix it together, it generates the gas. Yeah. But we basically start perfusing the dermis, and you can see the product actually working. Mm -hmm. So wherever you apply it, it'll turn a, a slight pink, mm -hmm. indicative of improved blood flow. Yeah. And then, you know, the cells start to turn over. You start to make new cells that work properly. You get more collagen deposition. Hydration improves. Fine lines and wrinkles disappear. And it's really a game changer in skin care and beauty. Yeah, that's really interesting. I had a chance to try it earlier. You applied it on my, on my arm. Uh, and, yeah, it turned red. And I asked you about the two chambers and why that's yeah. different. And you explained to me is because you want, you, it's not stable to have that's nitric right. oxide in the actual canister or the bottle. You want to make sure it creates nitric oxide, nitric oxide on your skin, and it creates it all four ways, meaning it not only goes into your skin, but also up in the atmosphere, releases. And the part that goes into your skin, then you know, dilates your blood vessels. That's right, recruits bring, capillaries. Recruits capillaries, brings blood flow. And that, you're saying, reverses fine lines, wrinkles, and aging. Yeah, that's right. See, basically, you, you, you we're constantly wearing ourselves out. I mean, dermal skin cells fall off and we replenish them. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have the oxygen and nutrients to need to regenerate those old cells with new cells with the proper barrier function, mm -hmm. then they do their job. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that, you have better hydration, better collagen, and then you get plump skin and the fine lines and wrinkles go away. Right, and that's just by improving blood flow. Simply, Simply by, by improving, improving blood, blood flow. flow. It's not even talking about improving your diet or having the yeah, right micronutrients right. or, you know, breathing more deeply. It's just bringing more blood flow. Yeah, every organ works better if you improve blood flow, whether it's your mm -hmm. sex organs, whether it's your heart, whether it's your skin, whether it's your brain. Yeah. It's all about blood flow. This is really fascinating because sometimes with health, you can go down a lot of rabbit holes and you can okay. say, okay, well, I need this and I need this, this device and I need to take 40 supplements, which... A lot of people do that. That's okay if you do. Uh, or I need to fix my diet this way. But what you're saying is blood flow or lack thereof is a root cause for That's a right. lot of problems downstream related to aging. And so if we can minimize, mitigate, and improve blood flow throughout the body, especially in extremities and places where you have wrinkles and aging spots, or where, which are aging, namely the face, possibly, then you can start to visibly see results reversible results where your skin is rejuvenating. Yeah, we've seen great results just using the serum alone, but nitric oxide is not a silver bullet. It's not an yeah. end-all, be-all, cure-all. But what we find is, and people take a lot of supplements, Yeah. but if you take the nitric oxide prior and open up the circulation to where you can deliver those nutrients, yeah. you're going to get better results. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we think that your body cannot, and we don't think, we know, your body cannot and will not heal without nitric oxide production because mm -hmm. then you until then you won't have adequate perfusion yeah but then once you have to eliminate the toxins give your body good nutrients and then the body has a chance to heal itself mm -hmm. so let me ask you a nerdy question yeah. let's say you take basic care of your health you eliminate the toxins as much as you can you eat the right food so you have the good nutrients in your body if you were to design a protocol to say hey i want the nutrient perfusion to the best of the body's ability, into the extremities, into the face, hair, scalp, hands, feet, and I'm gonna drink a smoothie that has all the the beauty and the vitamins and the greens in it. How would you kind of do the smoothie with the nitric oxide supplement to um, to make sure that it get, goes to the gut and it's able to go to all your extremities in the right sequence? Well, it's tricky generating a labile gas, so what we would have to do is you would have to make that smoothie up, so we would have to add a standardized amount of nitrate, nitrite, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then when you mix this together, you'd almost have to take it as a shot, so you'd have to drink it very quickly, mm -hmm. because in this mixture, we're generating nitric oxide gas. Yeah. So you don't want generating nitric oxide in the headspace, 
you want to consume it as quickly as possible. That way, in the oral cavity, all the way down through the esophagus, the yeah. stomach, yeah. you're generating nitric oxide gas through the entire transit mm -hmm. of the gastrointestinal mm -hmm. system. And assuming that it takes an hour for it to digest and come into the bloodstream, let's just pick a number, right, one hour, then is it better to take nitric oxide at the end of the hour after the smoothie, or do you take it with the smoothie? Well, no, the beauty of how the body works is, is that there's kind of some overlap in the pharmacokinetics. <clears throat> so, for instance, with our lozenge, we generate nitric oxide immediately, mm -hmm. and that lasts for probably two to three hours Okay. in the pharmacokinetics. And then that is actually or oxidized to nitrate, and then the body concentrates the nitrate in our salivary glands. So starting at 90 minutes, you start to see nit nitric oxide being produced from the nitrate. So you get perfect overlap and perfect pharmacokinetics if we were de developing kind of a time-release nitric oxide. But yet the body does it for us. Yeah. Just as long as you have the right oral bacteria, mm -hmm. so you can't use mouthwash, you can't use antacids, and you should limit the number of antibiotics you take over a period of time. Okay. Folks listening, cut out the Listerine, That's cut out right. the mouthwash, cut out the fluoride, cut out the antibiotics, and what's the third thing you said? Antacids. Antacids. That have an impact as well. Okay, if that's all good, then you can take, presumably take, nitric oxide with your smoothie, which has all the nutrients that you need. That's right. And then it can get delivered to the organs and extremities and to your skin and to your face, which is great. Okay, so that's the lozenge. Right. That's formulated as a supplement that you can that's buy. Right. Where can you buy this? Well, we've got, um, so that we created a, a company called Numa Nitric Oxide. We're, we're positioned in the skincare and beauty space. Mm -hmm. So that's where our topical product um, plays. And so we, we developed this concept of beauty inside and out. Mm -hmm. So if you take the lozenge, the N101 lozenge, it opens up the systemic circulation so you yeah. get better perfusion of all tissues. Mm -hmm. And then you combine that with the topical. You're really hitting beauty from the inside and out. So that's okay. kind of going to be the best bang for your buck. Yeah, let's talk about the topical quickly. And so you've got the two two um, capsule, two, um, two chambers, two chambers in the in the canister in the in the serum bottle, and you mix it on your skin, and that creates nitric oxide, that's right. which then goes into your um, capillaries and opens them up. So there's more blood flow coming in. Is your vision that people do it on their face, on their hands? Where would they use this system? The well, topical. it's a skincare product. Anywhere you've got problem areas, you know, mm -hmm. we've seen it on the back of the legs with the varicosity and varicose veins. Yeah. Um, but it's a skincare product. I mean, may, it's a premium product. You know, it's some, you know, 20 years of research that goes yeah, yeah. into that technology. Um, but I think, like for for women primarily, they're concerned about uh, you know looking older, and not just women, all of us, right? Yeah. So we want to worry. We worry about the fine lines and wrinkles on our face, on our neck, on our décolleté, the back of the hands. Uh, and so that's where we're seeing the most use and the most effects of it. Okay. Uh, but, you know, people are creative and they apply it to other places, wherever they want to increase blood flow. <laughs> <laughs> like sexual <laughs> organs? That's sex organs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It gets the wrinkles out. <laughs> <laughs> Very, so, wow. Well, stretched skin, huh? That's right. <laughs> nice. Very well said. Okay, so um, on the topical front, how often... How long, I think you mentioned this, but please reiterate for me, how long do the results last? Because when I saw the redness in my skin, that was only for two or three minutes. Right. But how long do my capillaries stay open for improved blood flow? Well, what we're trying to do, we do a number of things here. So the nitric oxide improves blood flow, but in that local area where we apply it, so it has other functions like reducing the inflammation. And then what you want over time is regulation of blood flow. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to control blood flow to certain regions. Yeah. And that's what the topical... Uh, is allowing, but in our in our clinical trials, we have people use it twice a day mm -hmm. for 30 days, and then we look at the before and afters. We look at some objective measures on biopsies, on some um, some sophisticated imaging to look at uh, you know the perfusion of the skin. Uh, but what we haven't done, what we don't know, is if you stop using it, do you lose the effects or do they stay? Right. And I think that's going to be dependent upon what type of environment you're you're living in and how well you take care of your skin. Mm -hmm. But what we know is if you start using it within 30 days, you see almost transformative results. Okay, okay, so I guess if you're, re and I put air quotes around this, if you're reversing the age, reducing yeah. the wrinkles around a particular area, let's say your crow's feet by your eyes, right? And in 30 days, you notice a marked improvement from before and after, right. and then you stop using it, you get lazy, you run out, whatever it is, right, you stop. Is it going to slowly come back to that spot 
let's say you reverse your age by a year. Yep. Is it going to take you another year to come to the spot you were, or do you think the progression back to base is going to be fast? You know, we don't know the answers to that. We haven't designed a clinical trial to, to answer that question. But here's what I think. I think that as people start to utilize this and make changes, if people are going to spend money yeah. to look better and feel better, then hopefully they're going to have the discipline to get rid of the, the unhealthy things they're doing. Yeah. And then take better care of themselves, good nutrition. Um, you know, sunlight's important in moderation. Uh, infrared light, I like an infrared sauna. All that is good. So you've got to detox the body and then give the body what it needs, and the body heals itself. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So your recommendations for boosting nitric oxide and all the wellness from the inside and outside that you're talking about, anti-aging, is to take the lozenge. The lozenge. Is good. it a couple of times a day? Yep. And to apply the topical a couple of times a day as well and then measure your results 30 days after. That's what you found in the clinical trial to be effective. That's right, that's right. Okay. And you gotta stop doing the things that disrupt your body's production of nitric oxide. Which is? Namely the fluoride, stop using mouthwash, and if you're on antacids, you have to get off. Yeah. I mean, those, your body cannot and will not heal if you're doing those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's clear, the science is, is very clear. And then, you know, I think, the, obviously supplementation's important, but it's even simpler than that. It's moderate physical exercise, we have to move, yeah. Uh, throw in some more green leafy vegetables, a uh, good clean diet, and then, you know, some sunlight and an infrared sauna. Mm -hmm. And it's really that simple. You know, the medical paradigm today has become way too complicated. Right. And we have to simplify things. And the mm -hmm. simplest, kind of distill it down to the simplest um, uh, philosophy is you get sick for two reasons and two reasons only. Your body's exposed to something toxic or it's missing something that it needs. Mm -hmm. If you remove the source of the toxicity and replete the missing nutrients, the body heals itself. Yeah. And in that model, there's no room for pharmaceuticals. Yeah. We don't need a statin. We don't need a ARB or a proton pump inhibitor. Mm -hmm. Our body's not designed to, to take those. Right. Right. And yeah. Forever. Forever. Uh, that too. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, Dr. Brian, did you say where, we can, where people can go buy these, uh, these things? Well, I have an educational website yeah. that provide information. It's drnathansbryan.com. It's drnathan, S is in Scott, Brian. Yeah. That's also my Instagram uh, handle. Uh, the, skin, uh, the skin products are found at n101.com. Uh, my drug company, those of you interested in kind of the future of, of drug development, is nitricoxideinnovations.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a drug in phase three clinical trials now for COVID. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, drug applications going in for diabetic ulcers. We're using our topical and for ischemic non-obstructive coronary disease. And we'll do a pilot study in vascular dementia and Alzheimer's. So I predict that our nitric oxide technology will transform uh, healthcare and the treatment of chronic disease for the next 40 or 50 years. That's fantastic. And it's not, at the surface, it's not that complicated, it's not right? That complicated. It's a basic premise. Blood flow, restricted blood flow is causing all these downstream effects. And if you fix that, then, you know, hopefully with, with some of the data you're collecting in your clinical trials, uh, with COVID and others, right. you can prove that it actually is improving long-term outcomes and health and longevity. So really cool, excited to hear about this technology and where you take it. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested in getting this, go to n101.com and make sure to check out Dr. Nathan S. Bryan. With that said, thanks for, sh thanks for coming to the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast. Thank you.